Hello, Fermi and friends. I'm Matt Butcher. I've got my remarkable tablet here. Uh, today, we're going to talk about four domains for WebAssembly, four areas where WebAssembly uh, has some great technological advantages. The first one of those is going to be unsurprising to all of us, I hope, because that's the web browser. In fact, the web in WebAssembly indicates that this technology was indeed built for the web browser. Now, the promise was that WebAssembly would be a binary format that could execute in the, in the browser, but that a wide variety of different programming languages from like C and Rust on to you know, Ruby and Python could be built into WebAssembly and executed side by side with JavaScript inside of the web browser. Now, that's a great model. And of course, you're seeing companies like Figma and Adobe make frequent use of this. But another area that we can apply WebAssembly is in an area where we're dealing with resource constrained devices, such as in the Internet of Things. Now, WebAssembly can be executed in an interpreted mode, which means this kind of stack based virtual machine uh, format for WebAssembly can ideally be executed successfully on constrained devices that don't have a lot of processor power and don't have a lot of memory. The Internet of Things is, of course, a great place to apply a technology like WebAssembly. Now there's a third category that's really exciting for WebAssembly, and that's the world of plugins. When you think about a plugin, a plugin is essentially an extension to an existing application. So I write an application that does the things I want, you want some other things, and I, as the application creator, can provide a little environment in which you can write your own extensions. The browser is a great case of this because we frequently augment our browser with things like our password manager or our preferred advanced bookmarking tool or web clipper. Now, when I, as an application developer, traditionally would in, in, insert a, uh, a plugin system, I would choose a programming language runtime, like maybe the Lua engine, and I would put that into my application. But that had the sort of negative side effect that everybody has to write their applications in the language that I chose, in this case, Lua. Now, because WebAssembly is language neutral, it'd be really cool to be able to embed a WebAssembly runtime inside of your application so that your developers can write applications in whatever language they want and still be able to extend your platform in new and cool ways. Now, the fourth one is the one that I am the most excited about, and that is cloud. I'm going to put a little star on there because I'm so excited about it. Uh, and this is really cloud edge, all of those technologies where I take my application and I push it onto somebody else's hardware somewhere else out there and they execute it for me. Now, there's a feature of WebAssembly in the browser that makes it a great technology for the cloud. And that feature is the security sandbox. Clearly, I wouldn't want to, uh, you know, let somebody else's C or REST code run inside of my web browser if it could do dastardly things like access my file system or start up new servers. Uh, so there's a strong security sandbox model embedded in the WebAssembly specification. Now, that security model happens to be very similar to the profile we need for the world of cloud, right? So typically, when we think of cloud compute runtimes, we think of virtual machines, the sort of big, beefy kernel to application uh, uh, runtime of the cloud. And then we think more recently of containers, Docker containers, containers, uh, as, as a way to kind of, instead of getting the whole virtual machine image, we just take our application and a little slice of that, and we package that up in a container image. Now, to that, we could add this kind of third class of cloud compute, WebAssembly. And WebAssembly, we'd compile our binaries and package just the files we need, and we deploy that into the cloud, and the server can run that. So here are four different domains where I think WebAssembly is a very promising technology. You might be able to think of a fifth or even a sixth, but whatever, you, whatever the case, you know, go out there and build interesting things. I'll talk to you all later.